set me up on a rock. Let us pray. Father God, it is just your humble service coming before you. We welcome you to this church, this community, this world. It is your world where we still have to welcome you because we have to control that you. You are the greatest thing that ever happened to us. Father God, God, as you look upon your world and see some of the things going on today, I know you want to cry. Because we want to cry, God, because we are crying out to you for help. Crying out to you every day for your help. So, Lord, walk amongst us as you always do. Just point us in the right direction. For only you can do that, Father God. Father God, I come to you, not for me. But for the many others that don't know you, Father God, the many others that haven't had a chance to try you. Because if they tried you, they wouldn't try anything but you, Father God. Father God, we're coming here this Sunday because we know we have you. And we want to be that rock that you build this church upon. In your name we pray. Amen.
missionary center. We thank God for these missionaries who are following in the footsteps of Paul. And we thank God for all of you. 
celebrate this missionary service. The fact is, we are all missionaries. We all should be doing the work of a missionary. We should be a missionary church. Amen. Several churches make a distinction. They say they call themselves a so-and-so missionary Baptist church. Well, we don't have to change our name, but we still can call ourselves a missionary church. And today, I salute those here at Fairfield Baptist Church who uh, have answered the call to be a missionary. I salute you for the work you've done for this many years, and I pray that God will continue to bless you with many more years of doing His work. Um, God's work is it, really it's just as important now as it has ever been. We have our presidential uh, candidates all saying that this election means more than it ever has meant in history. But I'm here today that the work of the missionary, everything you do is more important than anything in the world. When you go out to tell somebody about Christ or just visit sick folk and just represent the church and your pastor and yourself well, you are a good missionary. Amen. To those today who are viewing us on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Zoom, a conference call, we thank you for your uh, uh, just being able to worship with us. We encourage you to just uh, tune in every Sunday at uh, 1030. You will see church service just like none of This church is a church in the neighborhood for the neighborhood. Amen. We thank God for what has happened here at this church. We truly thank God for Pastor Taylor. Young man, he could be doing a lot of things that a lot of young people are doing. But he has taken upon himself, not upon himself, but God has called him to be the pastor of this church at this time. So I salute Pastor Taylor, and I salute our missionaries, and I salute all of those in our congregation, and I salute those in our TV audience. I uh, would like to thank uh, Stacy Atkins for uh, Jane Harris, sorry, for reading that scripture. Amen. James, you did a fine job. And, uh, I'm not going to read that entire uh, scripture that he read earlier, but I'm just going to lift up a portion of that 27th Psalm. I'm going to lift up that fifth verse. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you at this time, Lord. Humble as we know how, Lord. Come, Lord, knowing that you are listening, you are watching, you are, you are in our midst, because the word says we have a two or three gathered in your name, Lord, that you will be in our midst. Thank you, Lord. And as Dick and Jane Perry said earlier, we really don't have to invite you, really, because you're, you, you, you're already here. This is your church that we have dedicated to you and your service. So, Lord, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you want to do. And it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Uh, when the first march on Washington took place, 1963. I was like a lot of young blacks. I was radical and angry at the white man for what he had done to us over the years. And we have a march on Washington this weekend also. Uh, and folk are protesting against some of the same things they did 57 years ago. And you could call those folks missionaries also because they, they are out trying to right wrong, try to show the goodness of the Lord and what they are doing because they believe that there is still some goodness and mercy in America. We are not going to give up on America. This is our home. I have African ancestry and different places ancestry, but America is my home. So I love this country just as well as any white person loves this country. They are not going to send me back to Africa. Because this is my country. This is my country. And I love it just as much as they do. 
And we have a march on Washington going on this week also. And folk are protesting against some of the same things they did 57 years ago. And you could say that these marches are really just kind of repeat itself. Because the more they ain't changed, the more they stay the same. And it's a shame that 57 years after Martin Luther King had the march on Washington, that we still have some of the same problems today that we had then. And years ago, when they protested in 1963, uh, I didn't believe that Martin Luther King was the right man for the problem that we were facing in America. A lot of blacks were like that. He was relatively new on the scene. I think in 1963, Martin Luther King was about 33 years old. And a young man out of nowhere, and he is all of a sudden proclaiming the direction for this country. Martin believed in the nonviolent approach of Mahatma Gandhi. Some of you biblical scholars know who I'm talking about. Because his approach was nonviolence. But not all of the young leaders at that time Followed in modern step against non uh, uh, being non violent. They were not willing to be slapped on both cheeks. And I wasn't willing to be slapped on both cheeks either. I, I, I just couldn't believe, I couldn't agree to just be uh, slapped on one cheek, turn the other, and, and I said, no, I, I cannot follow that precept. John Lewis, Ralph Brown, Stokely Carmichael, and Several of the young leaders of activists during that time were all followers of Martin Luther King in the early 60s. Uh, John Lewis, a key man of that time. Uh, but I was jubilant when H. Rap Brand and Stokely Carmichael left the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, known as SNCC, and went their separate ways. But when Rap Brown left SNCC, he got into bad trouble. Congressman Lewis called his good trouble to do things on the right way. But Ralph Bryan and Stokely Carmack got into bad trouble. And John, John Lewis stayed with SNCC and got into good trouble over the years. Amen. Uh, I also believe that uh, John Lewis was almost beaten to death on that Edmund Pettus Bridge because he was all for good trouble. Amen. Some folks say, how in the world can a man almost get beaten to death and it's good trouble? Well, it was a need. It had to be done. And he was willing to sacrifice his life because it was good trouble to let this country know that we were sick and tired of being sick and tired. I also believe in the work that Angela Davis was doing at the time. But, but she got into bad trouble and the system tried to destroy her. But she survived, and, and, and now she is causing good trouble. She's still, I'm not sure if she's still a professor or not, but uh, she went on to become a great professor at a college out in California. Here in Newton, Bobby Seale and Edwards Cleaver and the Black Panther Party were also some of my heroes during that time. But the Black Panther Party was almost destroyed from an informer who, who was inside of the party and they turn it into bad trouble. Amen. See, you got to watch who you run with. You got to watch who your so-called friends are. Amen. And and you would think, say, well, man, we're all black. We're on the same accord. But, but you know, don't buy into that. Because the other night when I saw these black supporting Donald Trump, and I know we're on TV, so TV audience, don't don't turn your TV off. Just, just hold on a minute. When I saw all these black folks supporting Donald Trump, and I'd already heard that his goal was to lure blacks in. And I said, that's what he's doing. You know, it's just like a spider. You know, they, any animal, they would put things out there so they could get their prey. And so Donald Trump is using black folk just to get other black folks. Amen. And I was also a very angry young man at, at that time also. One of my brothers was stabbed in Monroe Park over here on Laurel Street years ago. A, a, a white gang. No one was ever arrested, no one was ever charged, because my brother was black, and those who did it were white. Amen. My mother perceived that I was angry. And one day she told me, she said, Bobby, just remember, you've got some good white people on our side. She told me to be thankful for the good white people. 
And, and, and I didn't understand what my mother was saying at the time. But one day I told my mother, I said, Mom, look, you were right. We can't do it on our own. And I thank God for you and your wisdom. And I thank God for the good white people. And, and there might be folk today who are still angry at white people. But not all white people are our problem. Some, some white people are on our side right now. Some white people are protesting uh, in, they are in favor of the laws about Black Lives Matter. And I meant to tell somebody that we've got to wake up and smell the coffee. Amen. Now, one day, uh, I decided to get into some good trouble. When they saw something wrong, they, John Lewis said, if you see things wrong and it's good trouble, do something about it. And you have too many black folk today who see things wrong but will not say a word about it. They will not lift up their voice against it, and they are just as docile as blacks were right after slavery and during slavery. Because even as uh, Coach and I were talking earlier, see, we didn't have many folks to encourage us to be all we could be. We had folk encouraging us to just get a shoe shine box, shine shoes on the corner, and, and, and just your, your, your ceiling is limited. You can't go for so high. But all along, we knew we could go high if we had the chance. But the man wouldn't give us a chance. But now we don't have much excuse because opportunities are there. I believe that the white man will hire you as quick as a white another white man if you prove that you are capable and can make his company some money. And I know what I'm talking about. So just, just learn as much as you can and be all you can be because opportunities are here now. But we still have enemies. We've got one in the White House. The guy that dyes his hair orange. Amen. He dyed his hair orange, and his, his sister and, and, and niece said he's the dumbest thing to ever come out of New York. So he, he don't know up from down, he, he don't know left from right. He always has somebody to do everything for him, and he's sitting in the White House controlling this country. I'm here to tell you, pray for that man. Pray for that man. Pray that God touches his heart and changes him in a way that is beneficial to God and to us. Amen. So you, have some, you have some folks who say they've never been in trouble. Well, my advice is live long enough. Because if you keep on living, trouble's going to come knocking at your door one day. Amen. They had better know that God said that he would never leave you or forsake you. He said he would be with you always, even until the end of the world. If you've got friends out here that will tell you, hey, well, don't worry, man, I got your back. Until you need somebody to have your back, then you'll find yourself all by yourself. But I'm here to tell you that God has got your back every day, every night, every your whole life. If you only learn how to turn it over to God, if you only learn how to realize that, that God owns everything. You know, God owns Donald, Donald Trump took so on all these hotels and, and casinos, but Donald Trump don't own anything because God owns everything. The song says God owns everything and everything belongs to him. Donald Trump has got to realize that one day, he's going to have to count for his actions. Amen. And all of us here today got in trouble sometime. All of us here today, at one time, we were the enemies of God, unless you were born a Christian. See, being a Christian, you got to be born again. You, you don't automatically become a Christian when you come out of your mother's womb. You've got to come out and live this life, and, 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 and when you realize right from wrong, and you choose to go wrong, then God will hold you accountable. But I'm here to tell you, until that day comes, you are God's enemy. But I thank God that we're on the Lord's side. We're on the, uh, who would they say? I, I got the right one, baby. We got the right one, baby. I'm here to tell you, Donald Trump can't do it so much. If, even if Donald Trump wins again, he's going to be gone in four years. But I'm praying to God, pray to God, that this man doesn't win again. Because he doesn't deserve it. This man has got an agenda that doesn't include us as black folks. Amen. And the only reason some of us are here today is because somebody prayed for us. They had us on their mind. And they took the time to pray for us when we wouldn't even pray for ourselves. Amen. It's getting to the point that every week that the police are shooting black folks for nothing. And that's bad trouble. But black folks are also killing black folks for nothing. And that's bad trouble. Amen. we got to start calling a spade like a spade like it is. Amen. See, the white folks, see, they think, well, yeah, yeah, black lives, well, what, what about the killing, y'all killing yourself? We know all about that. That's been a problem all along. 
We're talking about these white folks and these police officers who are rednecks and murderers on the police force who know that they are killing black folk. Doc Rivers made a statement the other day that has stuck with me ever since. He's the coach of the L.A. Clippers. He said, you can't understand. He was getting tearful. He said, I can't understand why the white folks are afraid of us when they the, we the ones being killed. You know, they're the ones killing us. So why in the world are they afraid of us when they're the ones who, think about it, they are killing us and they are still afraid of us. It seems like they have got an agenda. I asked a white man one day, I said, why is it that uh, 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 white folks, I said, you don't have to answer that you want, but why is it that white folks, just, some white folks hate black people? He thought and paused for a moment and he said, come to think of it, I don't know why. And see, it's a shame for, for people to hate you with no reason whatsoever. We haven't done anything to this white man. Some folks said, yeah, they're afraid the black man wants the white woman. No, that's not it. That's not it. I think they see something in us that really frightens them. They know that we are superior beings, but all through the ages, they have been trying to tell us that we didn't amount to nothing. They didn't want you to read during slavery. They didn't want you to learn nothing. They would almost kill you if you knew how to read, because reading opens doors. Amen. I know God will open doors no man can close, and close doors no man can open. But if you read for yourself, you can open your own doors. Amen. We live in a country where black people are in trouble just for being black. And that's a shame. I, I've got grandkids now. I, I've got grandkids, uh, uh, two grandsons that I tell all the time. When, it, when the police stop you, regardless of what race he is, you do what he tells you to do. Don't get smart with it. You might ask him why are you stopping him, stopping you, but whatever you do, don't mouth at him and don't get smart with him because he's going to need a reason to do what he wants to do anyhow. You just go ahead and do what he tells you to do and you'll live to see another day. And that's a shame that we've got to tell our young black men that. A young black man, as nice as real is, and they mind, they could very well be killed by a policeman just for being black, not knowing that they are the two the nicest, sweetest young men you'll ever know, but they're black. We have black people who are supporting Donald Trump because they think the Republican Party is the party of Lincoln. But they need to come and sit in on my English place, my history place at times. Because you see, the Republican Party today is not the party of Lincoln. The Republican Party today consists of your rednecks and racists. When Lyndon Johnson signed that Civil Rights Act in 1964, that's right, I know what I'm talking about. The Southern governors and senators told, who were Democrats told Lyndon Johnson, Lyndon, because you signed that Civil Rights Act, the South will never go Democratic again. And you know what? They, they, it, it, it happened. All old black governors and senators and all started becoming Republicans. And the Republican Party today is where your rednecks and your racists are at because they left the Democratic Party, which was doing too much for the black folk. I don't understand why black folk don't read books. Just, just read, and you'll know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about because I read. Amen. But those black folks who will vote for Trump need to know that Republicans of the day are not on their side. It's a part of rednecks and racists. Amen. And I know some of my viewers on TV, I hope some white folks are looking at it. I, I, I don't mean to uh, be sitting up here uh, lambasting you and criticizing you because I hope that you are not a redneck and I hope that you are not racist. But I'm talking specifically to those white folks who have joined that Republican Party with the intent of holding us back. You've also got them in these, religious, these radical groups. The young man who shot two people the other night was a, a, a young white racist trained in, in just how to kill blacks when the time comes. And the, the time is now. Now, I don't want you to be walking around afraid, but if a pickup truck pulls beside you at night, tenant windows, I, I, either, I tell you to back up and let them go on or whatever, because there might be some white folks out there trying to kill you. Amen. We've been in trouble since we've been in this country. The only reason we survived is because God is hiding us in his pavilion. Amen. See, we, we, we are chosen people. We, if you look at it, we are very similar to the Israelites who were in bondage, what, 400 years, right? We were in bondage in this country for something like 400 years. You go back to 1619 until 2019. I know that's 400 years, and it hasn't all been in bondage, but it has all been oppression. Amen. 
we have been oppressed. We don't care what we do. The dumbest white man think he's smarter than Obama. The dumbest white man think he's smarter than Obama because Obama is black. Amen. Now, I didn't come here today to talk about politics. I, I, I really want to talk about being a missionary because, your, your, you know, your work is essential. It's needed. And God is going to bless you even more because you're sending up your temples. Every time you go out and tell somebody about Jesus, every time you knock on a door and you're fishing somebody, your God is going to say, well, I'm going to put another crown, another jewel in your crown. See, people take, think that being a missionary is not an important job. We know pastoring is an important job, uh, you know, music, music and different things. But being a missionary is essential to the growth of the church. It's essential to the spirit of the church. We need to recognize missionaries more than what we do. Not just on fifth Sunday, but every Sunday. Something should be said about the missionary. And somebody in the sound of my voice went to bed last night in trouble. They woke up this morning in trouble. But they need to go to the rock. And they need they want to know about the rock. And they want to know how can a rock do anything but be a rock. You see, I'm not talking about moon, moon rock. I, 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 I'm talking about uh, uh, the rock that became a man. He, some folk call him the bright and the shining star. Amen. And, and when Paul and Silas went to jail, they got into good trouble because it was the rock who opened that door, the jailhouse door. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, uh, could have obeyed the king and, and fell down to the golden image, but they said that they were going to get into some good trouble because they won't go worship no golden image, amen. And they refused to bow down. But I'm here to tell you that when they put them in that furnace, old King Nebuchadnezzar said, look, I don't know what's going on, but I know y'all put four, three men in that oven. But right now I'm looking around, it's another man in that oven also. And it looks like the Son of God, but I call him the rock. The rock was right there with them at the time, amen. See, the rock is all the way through the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, amen. I know what I'm talking about. I came by the day to tell the missionary that, that when troubles come upon you, don't frown and don't you fret. Just go to the rock of your salvation. Because some people don't know anything about the rock, and the missionaries have got to tell them about the rock. We sing a song sometimes, Oh, oh Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Uh, uh, Job says that man born of a woman is full of trouble, and he's going to have it all the days of our lives. But what Job didn't realize that Jesus was going to put an end to our trouble. The rock is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. When, when, when I'm in trouble, I go to Jesus because in the rock, he's the rock of my salvation. Oh, yes, he is. I'm here to tell you that I know what I'm talking about. I love preaching because when you're preaching, you know what you're talking about. You don't have to be all this dumb stuff. I know what I'm talking about. The rock that that David is talking about in the psalm is Jesus. Amen. Some folks say that David didn't mention Jesus. He didn't have to mention Jesus because Jesus was there all along. Amen. I don't know about you all here today, but I love myself. I love Jesus. I love my family. I love my church. I love my pastor. I love all my ministers, the choir. I love everything about Fairfield. I love all the churches that are trying to do the will of God. Amen. But in this day and time, we have got to know about this rock. Amen. You see, the rock came down through 42 generations. Amen. He came down and he, he was beaten and almost killed on a Thursday night. They took him down and they made a slave man named Simeon take his cross to the hill. Amen. And I'm here to tell you on that Friday, they pierced him in his side and they made mockery of him. And I'm here to tell you, the rock looked down at him. And he said, they don't forgive a father because they don't know what they're doing. Amen. He told John, to John, look after my mother. Amen. He said things like, it's over, it's finished. And I'm here to tell you that it's not finished because when Jesus died, it was just the beginning. Amen. And I'm so glad that he got up on that Sunday morning with all power in his hand. The Bible says he rolled the rock away. But I'm here to tell you the rock got up from the grave on that Sunday morning. The rock got up and he went up to the Father. And I'm here to tell you that he came back. He walked the streets of Jerusalem for 40 days and 40 nights. And a whole lot of folks saw him. And he said to himself, how in the world can a dead man live? But I'm here to tell you that dead man was just no ordinary dead man. The dead man was a rock. And he is a rock of my salvation. 
And I'm so glad that I can call him mine. Amen. He's mine, mine, all mine. But he's also yours, yours, all yours. We serve a God who can be here and he can be in that TV audience. I thank God this morning on this missionary Sunday that you're able to tune in and just see what this church is doing on this corner here in Richmond. I'm so glad that the Pastor Taylor gave me an opportunity to preach once again. Amen. I, I, I know that I can't do things like I used to, but even if I have to sit down or lay down, I can still preach. Amen. Because I love to talk about the rock. Amen. The rock of my salvation. Oh, yes, he is. And to our missionaries, we thank God for what you've done. We thank God for what you're doing. We thank God for what you're going to do. Just keep your peace. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight all your battles. Don't give up. When you feel like giving up, just give your hands to God. Go to your prayer closet and then say, Father, I stretch my hands to you, Father. The world just don't understand what I'm going through. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the missionaries are held in high esteem in God's sight because that's the only title that Paul had except for being an apostle. He was a, a missionary, a great missionary who traveled all the known world at that time. And he was the reason that some of, some of us are here today because he kept the word alive. He kept the word alive, and I thank God that he told folk about Jesus. And I call him Jesus also. I call him friend. I call him my savior. But I also call him the rock. The psalmist says, God will keep us in the secret of his pavilion and set us upon a rock. And that rock is Jesus. Just give your all to Jesus. Give your hand to the deacons or ushers or whatever. But give your hand, your heart to the rock. And I guarantee you, your life will never be the same again. He will put it running in your feet. He put a song in your heart. Amen. Once again, you may be here. You don't know who I'm talking about. You can't really understand unless you have an experience with this man named Jesus. You've got to meet him. You can meet him wherever you're at. Even that TV audience. Come on by some Sunday morning. And, and let's see what we are doing when our doors are open on Sunday once again. On this corner, 1500 mechanics get pipe. Just come on in. Go to church on the corner. But we love Jesus. We love each other. We love the rock. Because we know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where will we be? Amen. God bless you. Where would we be? Amen. That's the tip. Amen, amen. Let us let us let us give Pastor Holmes a hands out for praise on this on this beautiful Sunday morning. I mean, it, it, is, it is great to be able to, you know, sometimes for pastors to be able to just sit in the congregation and absorb the word of God. You don't you don't always have to be up front. Sometimes you can sit in the back and just enjoy the word of God. And we want to thank God, we want to thank God for using uh, Pastor Holmes even in this season of emergence, to be able to still get up with the veracity and the fire to be able to still bring a word to the people of God on this morning. A word that we needed, a word that we needed encouragement from, a word that allows us to know that there's still racist folk, but it's still God. A word that, that, that know that even though they're trying to take out black folk in these streets, but God is still rising up kings and queens as we are today. So don't get discouraged. Don't get ultimately frustrated that you do something bad that ain't that's bad trouble. But always be willing to get into some good trouble. Amen. 
Amen. We thank, we thank, we thank God for Him using John Lewis's word to be able to bring us a word that came from God. Amen. 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 I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm ready to run and shout around this church real big, real quick because ain't nobody in here, so I ain't got to worry about folks getting in my way and be hurting nobody by running up and down the aisle. Amen. But we we are, we thank we thank our choir on this morning. We thank all the missionaries. Uh, continue to listen out to for some things that we're gonna have. We're gonna be doing even in the, the season of COVID, even in the season of uh, 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 trying uh, the devil trying to separate us. But we're still gonna be doing some things. If you if you have kids at home and you need book bag, pencil, paper, anything, please uh, reach out to us um, either by the phone or by on on our Facebook page or on our email address. Um, to, for we can make sure we get you the stuff you need for your children. If you have a need of food, reach out to us and we'll make sure we can drop some groceries off by your house. Amen. If you have an issue paying a bill, we're going to let, let, let you know where you can go to get some help. Amen. Uh, we, we got your book bags. We got your school supplies. We got some food if you need it. But if you got a bill that needs to be paid, we... we Hey man, we got we got we got some we got some connections that help get to where you need to go. Amen, amen. So don't forget also that we, we are on Give a Fly um, to be able to give your donations. You can mail your donations and do not mail cash. Please don't mail no cash. But if you have a, a check you need to mail to the church, please or send it or contact your deacon or your trustee to be able to come and pick that thing up. And we now are on Cash App. If you want to give by Cash App. Uh, we, we, we have that function, function, the function as well, and that option as well. We thank you again. We bless you. Uh, we ask you to continue to, to pray for, uplift one another. Um, we, we just at least recently learned we have some more um, 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 members that have not been here, some disciples that have not been here with us, um, but they have contracted um, the disease um, that's out there. So we just ask you to pray for everybody. That is struggling with this um, terrible situation that I, that our country is in. Also, if you need to be able to register to vote, uh, we will we will be have we got papers here that or we can get you some papers to, to get you registered. Call us, contact us at the church, and we'll make sure we get your information straight. Um, if you can vote, if you want to vote early, I think starting in September. They're starting with absentee voting, and if you don't have to, you don't have to go out and, and, and stand in line. Because I believe I'm faithful that there's going to be some lines this year to be able to vote. Like, but if you want to do absentee voting, I think in Virginia they start in the middle of September. I don't have the correct dates, but also not only the presidential election is going on here in our city. Um, here in our city, we have um, city council. All the, I think a lot of the seats. In City council are up. A lot of the seats and and um, the school board is up. So if you want to affect change in your city, in our city, Richmond, Virginia, in the counties, the senators, um, the, the the House of Representatives, a lot of those things are up every two years. So every vote, every time you have the opportunity to vote, our people bled and died. For that opportunity. And the lie that the, the people keep telling black, your vote don't count. If your vote didn't count as much as it did, they wouldn't try so hard to keep you from vote. Always think about why people trying to keep because when you when you keep the black folk from voting, you you affect change in the negative way. Well, I don't believe my stuff. Look, you might not believe what's gonna happen on the federal level, but believe what's gonna happen in your school. Believe what's going to happen in your neighborhood. Believe what can happen right there on your street if you don't put the right people in the right places. And I ain't talking about just putting black folk in places because we know all skin folk ain't kin folk. Do your, do your research on your candidates. I know we're getting a little bit off, but the, he, he, Pastor Holmes um, prompted us to be uh, open the door for this thing. And building up on the rock. We have to have a solid foundation. And the solid foundation is you taking time out to go to the pole. That's where your foundation started. So we keep praying for, for each other. Keep uplifting each other. 
Uh, we want to thank all our ministers that, that come that come to this church and stand behind this powerful pulpit to preach the unadulterated word of God on how God has given. Next week we will also we will be having in person service. Next week is in person service. Reverend Charles will be uh, will be bringing the word. Uh, second Sunday we will have an overflow overflow lot service again. You can pull up, drive up, or even walk up to be able to share. And we we have people that they're parking the alley because they need to hear a word from the Lord. I had a, we had last week when we was giving our communion. A guy pulled up and said, "When y'all doing the parking lot again?" I said, "Very soon and very soon we're gonna do it again." So and we and, and DJ Father she will be coming back and, and, and spinning the ones and twos and getting us in the mood to hear another great word. Second Sunday we will be back in the bit. Second Sunday we will be in the parking lot, and, and fourth Sunday we'll be back in the bill. Amen. Amen. Let us let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you how you continue to use your men and women of God. We thank you, God, even in this season that the word of God is still going forth. The love of God is still teaching in the midst of hurricanes, in the midst of tornadoes, in the midst of fire, in the midst of diseases, in the midst of a fool being up in a 1500 Black Lives Matter. God is still on the throne because more people are being healed than dying. More people are coming into relationship with God than straying away from God. More people are tuning in to everybody's services across this nation that is receiving something they never received before. They are waking up. They are getting healthier. They are, they are, they are watching what they put in their bodies because we don't want our bodies to turn on us. We thank you, God, for this awakening season, this vision 2020, being able to see things more clearly that you know this one thing that life is not guaranteed tomorrow so live it today we bless you God we thank you God and in the name of Jesus we do pray amen amen and amen you may go in peace